get this show on the road. All right. All right. We're so, recording. Yeah, welcome. Uh, I'm Lori Hivey. My co-host today is Margie Hayworth. I'm the CEO and founder of Keystone Click. We are a strategic digital marketing agency located in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We help our, our mm -hmm. clients build brand awareness and generate leads online. We do that by first conducting research and then taking those pieces of data and insights that we gather in order to build a strategy that's really focused on helping our clients achieve their goals. And then we support the full implementation of that strategy. Oftentimes, marketing automation is a component of that. Margie, why don't you introduce yourself? Um, I'm, my name is Margie Hayworth, and I am the Director of Accounts and Operations here at Keystone Click. Uh, a little bit about uh, my role here is um, once a client comes in, they're definitely going to talk to me. And I always joke around that um, my role is professional nudger. Um, <laughs> with that around here, but um, I have more than 20 years of marketing experience and I would say maybe 10 of marketing automation if you count like the beginnings of constant contact and all that kind of thing. So I've uh, been working with marketing and automation for a long time and it is very helpful. So I'm excited that you guys are here and that what you're looking for are ways to be more productive because that's what this is about. It really is. All right, well, let's get the show on the road. So um, what is marketing automation? And, you know, opening this question, why don't you just throw in the chat, uh, if you're using some sort of marketing automation platform, um, you know, feel free to throw it in the comments. If you're watching on Facebook, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Are, do you have a platform or any tools that you're using right now? It's great to understand what people are using. That gives us a little feel for what your background and experience is. Um, we still will talk about the basics because we know some people are asking what really is marketing automation. So kind of looking at there, I'm not seeing any comments yet, but go ahead and throw it in whenever you're ready. Yeah, no, no rush on that. Um, all right, but here's, here's the definition that I'm going to talk about a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. And this is the definition from Salesforce, which is one of the many marketing automation platforms and resources that's out there. But I really like how they positioned it. And the way that I want to um, go through this is really talk about the words that I've bolded here. So the word technology, and obviously, you know, nowadays, it's typically a web-based solution. Back in the day, it used to be um, a software that you actually installed on your computer to, to have some sort of like a CRM component or managing some of your contacts and lists. But now it is definitely going to be web-based. Um, and the beauty of this is that it comes in many different shapes and sizes, price ranges, and it's offering a bunch of different things that you can do to just very simple components. So um, that it, it's broad is really what I'm trying to say. The next set of words in bold is manages marketing processes. And this is, again, a broad statement. Marketing processes consist of many things and have unique definitions really based on each of the organizational goals and objectives that your business has. At its core, though, marketing processes are a mix of managing contacts and leads, content marketing and measurement and analytics. So there's kind of like three segments there. The next phrase here is that multifunctional campaigns. So what that what I mean by that is that there's a variety of things that can be incorporated into marketing automation. So for example, our CRM system, so we use SharpSpring. Um, mm -hmm. I would say we've tried to make this as platform agnostic as, as possible. And we, between Margie and I, we've both worked in a number of different platforms, but within our organization, we work with SharpSpring. But what we're doing, and going back to the multifunctional campaigns, we've got our Guide to Profits campaign, we've got our Manufacturing White Paper campaign, we've got uh, a campaign set up for anyone attending webinars, which you'll probably see. We have campaigns for the two podcasts that we manage internally. We have our email newsletter, we have our hockey players in business our reach campaign we've got our bamboo reach campaign i mean there's ongoing and it's pretty much endless but the idea and the beauty of this is that you can track each one individually you can measure what's happening and all of these activities associated with it happen automatically and that's what i love about this and that last component here is multiple channels and what marketing automation allows you to do is you can manage email, you can manage social media, you can manage video calls, you can actually even keep track of direct mail activities, all mm -hmm. with 
marketing automation. So that's my definition. I know Margie, you've got a little bit different perspective on it um, from a visual standpoint. So why don't you kind of showcase what what what's happening in marketing automation? Okay, um, there's a lot here uh, in, in this, and I don't expect you to like be able to read each and every word here, but the point of this is that marketing communication um, is a vast field and automation benefits the entire funnel. Um, you're gonna see aspects on here that are kind of sales related, like lead scoring and um, CRM and keeping track of who's who and where they are in the, in the sales pipeline. You're also gonna see things that are traditional marketing type activities like campaign tracking and emails and dynamic list building. Um, but in the end, all of those things are affected by a good marketing automation platform or uh, even just a marketing automation campaign because it's gonna allow you to do things across different channels, as Lori mentioned, across um, different pieces of content. And then it's gonna allow you to do the analytics and reporting that sometimes can be really difficult to prove that that campaign was worth your time. Um, so uh, everything from visitor ID, which means if they, I'm just gonna pick a couple of these things, um, marketing automation platforms can recognize somebody who's already in your database if they visit your website and say, hey, guess what, they visited your website and they visited this page. So you kind of have an idea what they're interested in when you call them. Um, they can also do something like provide dynamic landing pages. A dynamic landing page is, hey, you have a great campaign out there and you want to bring people to it and you want to offer them something special, but you're bringing people in from two different kinds of people and you know that they're going to respond to either two different offers or they're going to respond to two different kinds of images. You can have the wedding photography image and you can have the commercial photography image all on the same page. So dynamic content is really cool. So some of those are a little bit more advanced aspects of it. We're gonna go over the fundamentals today and that's what we're gonna um, talk about next with mastering the basics. Um, Lori, let's go ahead and move forward. Yeah, yeah, I just wanna to touch on one thing real quick. So okay. um, this, like I'm, we mentioned SharpSpring, obviously this image references SharpSpring. Yeah. So mm -hmm. as I mentioned, there's a ton of different tools out there and you can actually have one tool that just does one component of this. Um, or there's systems that can do all of these things. So um, again, we're, we're not necessarily specific to a platform when we're talking about, but mm -hmm. I just want you to be aware of that. So um, yeah, why don't you dive in Absolutely. a little bit? With That's where I'm gonna, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Lori, finish. Oh, no, no, you're, you're good, you got this. All right. Um, absolutely. That leads into exactly what I wanted to start with, with mastering the basics. <laughs> um, I, I, I kind of call the social media automation as your entry drug. Um, this, is, this is your gateway drug to automation. And I think people are somewhat more familiar with social media automation than they might be other tools. Um, for social media automation, we're talking tools like Sendable, Buffer, Chat Funnel, Funnel, excuse me, any of those tools that allow you to take your social media and schedule them so th that every day you don't have to remember, oh, I need to do that post. So instead of that, you, you either do the whole month, you can even do longer than that, you schedule your posts, you put them in there. Um, great social media automation is... Um, going to save you time because you're scheduling in advance. It's going to help you do a better job of listening because it can provide notifications straight to your email or your dashboard, letting you know, hey, someone, someone said something, I need to respond. So that starts that great conversation, as well as it gives you a better ability to aggregate your reporting so that you can measure that ROI. Social media automation also allows you to manage all of your channels in one space. I know that's a, a concern for a lot of people is, you know, hey, I want to I want to post on LinkedIn and I want to post on Facebook. And then I also really think Pinterest would be a good place. And I've always loved Twitter. How can I make sure my messaging is consistent across all of those in terms of same tone and feel, but be a little bit different? Social media automation allows you to do it all in one place so you can look at what you're doing across channels and deliver it in a timely and interesting and effective way. Um, one of the really great things about some social automation tools is also that they can help you learn when the best time of day 
to deliver your particular message to your particular audiences and they will give you um, recommendations for that. Um, it can help your like messaging reach out a little bit further as another thing because you can do all those different channels at once so overall um like i said social media automation is kind of your entry drug because it's one kind of automation all at once um but as you as we move forward you can see there uh, is much more that you can do um let's see i think our next one lori is talking about crms yeah, um, I just want to add to this, like, so uh, the screenshot we have on here is sendable. And what I like about mm -hmm. this tool from an automation standpoint is that you don't have to just schedule every single post. You identify your evergreen content or the stuff that you want your is going to have a long shelf life. And then the tool will automatically reschedule when that next post is going to be distributed. So you can kind of say, you know, I've got 100 posts and I just want to do one every other day and it'll just continue to recycle those those posts and that's what i like about this specific tool sendable absolutely uh, that's a great point um so um yeah the next item here is more so on like the sales side of things so you're talking about the the marketing um with social media and at the end of the day we're all in business to push a message out there so that people do something we get, you know, they're taking some sort of action, whatever that is, we're, we're trying to get them to engage with us to, to buy from us or, or take, in, you know, take an initiative on something, whatever it is. So um, from the sales side of things, and this is how we tend to use it, um, is we keep track of who's engaging with our content that we're interested in actually doing business with. So if we've got someone on our email list, um, and then we see that they're uh, following, uh, visiting our website. We can see that they're opening our, our emails and clicking on links. They're engaging with our stuff on social media. They're, they've signed up for a webinar, you know, any of these things, as long as they're in our database, we can actually really pay close attention to, um, the types of activities that they're doing. So a couple of examples that kind of tie in on the sales and marketing side, Sharp Spring, as I mentioned, Zoho, um, HubSpot, Marketo, Salesforce, I mean, there's a, a number of them out there that exist. Um, one of the things that we do, and, and you can kind of see this illustrated, um, let's see here. Um, well, you were gonna talk about this part, right? So I'll talk about the, the funnel part is really, most of our contacts are entered in at the high level top of funnel activities. And that's kind of your, your marketing funnel activities. And then based on how they're engaging uh, with our content, we can progress them through the different stages. And some of the beauty is you can create automate automation or specific items that you want to have happen based on the different stage that there are in the sales funnel. So if we've, let's say we've presented a proposal to someone and we move them to the next stage, it says follow up, we can actually have some automated follow up email activity get sent to them. And we can even tie it in to say, oh, we're following up on a website proposal versus a marketing strategy proposal and have some supporting content based on the type of proposal that we're presenting to them. Absolutely. Um, as Laura points out, I mean, I'm going to back up just a step from where you were. Um, CRMs, you know, started out as contact relationship management systems. And so they were really very much a sales centered tool. That's why some of the earlier ones like Salesforce really focused on those aspects of things. And, and, and then um, that, that they're great at tracking your sales process, your quarterly progress goals, where you are in your funnel, your pipeline, all of those things. But I felt like saying, you know, that was where they started. And then they, you know, got into the Ginzu Knives commercial and said, but wait, <laughs> more. <laughs> platforms can just do so much more than that now. They, um, they're increasingly capable of providing the marketing automation that Lori was hinting at. Yes, sales automation, but also the kinds of things that we in the marketing department do um, instead of needing additional software that used to be necessary, like constant compact contact, or MailChimp for your emails. Now the CRMs are have some of those qualities built into them. Um, so you know, marketing automation goes beyond keeping track of the information. It helps you identify uh, behavioral trends, and that helps you um, give you uh, marketable insights, things that you can take action on 
as you're looking at your targets and the sales team is focused on any one individual salesperson, as a marketer, I can look at these trends and say, hey, I can lump this, all this kind of people into this kind of persona or this kind of lead. And they really respond to this kind of information. Uh, these tools can give you that kind of insight. And then you have a better idea of what actions you can do to help the sales team move people through the fun. Um, you, like Lori mentioned, I mean, there's this, this, it's really hard to see, I'm pretty sure, but the second graphic there is in, in um, Sharp Spring is called Life of the Lead. And you can see for any one particular person where they started out in contact with you. It could have been they filled out a website form and then you've emailed them and then they've done a, a number of different things. And it can help you understand what it takes for that lead and that kind of person to actually get a sale. Um, so the CRMs have come a long way and they've folded in a lot of tools. A sharp spring also includes the social media scheduler. So you wouldn't need your sendable, but they all have their different ways that they're useful. So you could also have one. Um, moving into this next one, I know Lori's gonna talk a little bit, oh, actually, um, Lori's gonna talk a little bit more about lists and segmentation, which is kind of where I was leading with learning about people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, as you have this database of, of your contacts or people you're interested in doing business with or, or just um, those you are doing business with or in individuals you want to stay in touch with, however you want to um, categorize your, your contacts, uh, the next way to really maximize any sort of marketing automation is to start segmenting your list. So a list is basically a set of customers or leads that you want to group together based on similar interests or demographics. As your leads interact with your content over time, you can actually track their behavior. So this is something that Margie was talking about a little bit, and you can actually automate some of the activity um, that's happening based on their behaviors by putting people into different lists. So um, there's uh, two types of lists, manual and dynamic. And a, a manual is pretty straightforward. If I wanna say, hey, everyone that lives in the state of New York goes on this list, I can filter by state and say, put all these people in a list and it's, it's you know, I'm manually or manually adding them or I attended, you know, whoever has attended today's webinar is going on a list. So I can segment any way I want manually. Dynamic is where you're building in rules that says, hey, if this person, signed up for my webinar, automatically add them to my list. Or I sent out this blanket email to everyone in my database, but everyone that clicked on this link, I want added to this specific list. And then you know you can start pushing messages out to that segmented list. Now segmented lists can be extremely powerful because then you can get really um, tailored and craft specific messages that's gonna mm -hmm. better connect and resonate with that individual. So the reason um, it's important to segment your, segment your list is that you can get more refined and precise with that messaging that's gonna connect with someone. And I have a quick story that I'd like to share. Um, our good friend, Susan Bayer, uh, owner of Audience Audit, this is her story that I'm, I'm regurgitating, um, but she's given me the blessing to share it. <laughs> so she does a lot of research on on behalf of her um, customers, her clients. And one of her clients is a very well-known uh, candle company. And they were trying to figure out why do people buy candles? I mean, Margie, want to take a guess? Why do people buy candles? Uh, uh, for me, it's ambiance, but I know a lot of people do it for smell maybe. Yeah, smell is a big component. So, you know, I like this time of year, I always like to put the the apple cinnamon spicy type candles out in my house, you know, just kind of getting the, the, the flavor of fall in the air. Um, some people buy candles because of color. So my kitchen's red. I only want red things in there and I'm only mm -hmm. going to buy red candles. I don't care about the smell. And then the third reason people buy candles is really they don't care. It's a gift for somebody else. <laughs> so, but once they learn this, they then segmented their audience by, these are the people that buy on color, these are the people that buy on smell, and these are the people that really don't care because they're buying it for someone else. And then they started pushing their messaging out there based on color, smell, or gift, and it significantly increased their sales actually. For sure, that makes a lot of sense because you're talking directly to them about what they care about. Totally. Um, uh, how does marketing automation help you do this? 
Um, one, the insights that we're talking about, but the, the, the workhorse marketing automation is the workflow. And you can see here, really the, the definition of a, a, a workflow is a series of actions um, that, you, that get to be done automatically that you used to do manually. And what they do for you is they main, they main control, I can't even talk anymore. They maintain the control over your customer journey from that first click until conversion and even beyond into retention they make you automatically think a little bit about your journey and what is good for that person at those different stages of your journey. Um, workflows make your life easier, like I mentioned, because there are certain tasks that you don't have to do manually, like sending an email. If that email is consistent enough each time, it can be done automatically. You've probably signed up for a newsletter or received an email, thank you for subscribing. You've probably gotten coupons, from your grocery store or maybe your local pizza place, all of those things are marketing automations. They all have happened automated. Um, I'm going to use an example um, that uh, of, a, of a series that uh, is triggered based on um, somebody's actions. Um, let's say, um, I think the, the most common thing is Anybody who goes to the grocery store, and I know that's not everybody, everyone that goes to the grocery store probably has an affinity card. And you've used that every time you go through so that you can get the deal, you can get the sale price that's on there. Well, your grocery store knows that and they've collected that information. And now you've probably received coupons that have to do with those products or similar products. Um, we can take that a step further. Let's say um, you're a college soccer shop or you're nearby a college and you have a soccer shop and you have either e-commerce or a, a brick and mortar school store and you have someone come in and they're buying something and they want to sign up for your affinity card and so you say great you can get the sale price you you take down their name and you take down what college they're going to well now you know something about them that you can use um, to encourage them to come in with further sales so as a marketing automation three weeks later you have a sale going on for school merchandise for that, you send them an email that says, here's your coupon. Let's say they take, it, they take advantage of that, come in and they also buy something about Manchester United or, or you know, I don't wanna be, I need to be agnostic, maybe it's Chelsea. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's a little bit of soccer things going on here in this office. Um, but now you know one more thing about them um, because you can connect that to the record because they've used the affinity card and you can give them a sec subsequent email when those items come in sale. So they're automated based on their behavior. The person has now bought a different kind of merchandise that you know about and you sometimes have sales on. You can provide them with that information without having to rummage through your receipts or anything to do with your sales records. Your system can do it for you, saving you time and encouraging them to come back in. So that's a lot. I'm sorry. I, <laughs> that, there, no, I, I thought million, that was great. I have a million examples of oh, how, I know, and I, uh, I love, automation I love to make your life easier and to get more sales. <laughs> I love it. Well, let's talk about prioritizing best leads. I mean, there's just so much you and I could talk about this forever. Like you said, we, yeah. we do this day in and day out, but we want to be efficient and, and respectful of everyone's time. But one of the yeah. things that I really love about, um, from a sales perspective, I know we keep kind of flip-flopping marketing to sales, but really they kind of go hand in hand. And, and a lot of the marketing automation is leading to the sales activities, which mm -hmm. then ultimately um, help us be efficient because you can do some automation around that. Mm -hmm. So on the sales side of things, how it ties into sales. Marketing automation, one of the things that I love about it is that we're tracking the behaviors. And we've talked a lot about that a little bit, but then you can tie the behaviors to a number and basically saying and putting some weight on the significance of the activity. So for example, if someone opens up an email, I can add five points to their score. If they click on a link, I can add another five points. If they're engaged with our social media, let's add 10 points. If they signed up for a webinar, let's add 20 points, you know, but let's say, you know, I've been sending this person an email for a good uh, three months straight and they haven't even opened anything. I can say drop 20 points. And, and really what I'm doing is kind of putting some prioritization on who is my, my biggest opportunity and, and saying this is the hot opportunity versus the low opportunity. So this is just a, a screenshot on the lower side of, of what it looks like um, 
with uh, with our system and um, whoops. So that, that lead score, some examples, basically. There's mm -hmm. just, you can build your rules and any numbers associated with, with your business. And what are the activities or the behaviors that um, have the biggest significance to you um, and your business? All right. I think what we really care about is conversions, let's be real. Um, so um, what marketing automation can do for you to convert um, those prospects into, um, you know, repeat customers is um, email nurturing and social media integration. We're going to go through a couple of those, but truly email nurturing campaigns are the cornerstone of marketing automation. Um, they help you nurture leads down the sales funnel, as we've talked about, um, dynamically segmenting customers like we've talked about and spreading awareness all while developing exceptional end-to-end -end ROI. How's that for a sentence? Okay. <laughs> what it comes down to is you can nurture prospects, but you can also nurture clients to retain them and upsell them. There's a couple of things that automation does for you. It encourages you to consider the whole process of a campaign from its first interaction to the conversion and plan what you want it to look like. It creates a much more strategic approach that you're thinking, hey, if someone's at this stage, I know they need this piece of information. Then it gives you the tools to make that happen automatically with minimal effort on your part. Automation can be as simple as setting up your system to automatically resend your monthly newsletter to anyone who didn't open it with a new subject line so that, you know, hey, maybe you didn't hit them at the right day with the same subject, they're going to get the email again. And that's a simple automation that really improves that conversion for that letter. Yeah, let's talk about that real quick because we do that. Okay. That's our practice, right? With all yep. of our clients, that's, that's, yep. our newsletter and all of our clients. We it, we send the newsletter. It's our, it's built in the system, but we have a rule that says if, and this is that automation, if mm -hmm. someone has not opened the email within X number of days, then resend the email to them. Exactly. And we see our open rates um, improve significantly with that. Mm -hmm. And it's really just a matter of catching people at the right time, the right day with the sub right subject line. Um, so it's a simple, simple automation that has big results. Mm -hmm. uh, another example is using that social media scheduler we've talked about, um, learning more about those open times. Um, you can increase your conversion rates dramatically by doing your um, posting at the right time of day for your audience. And the same is true of email campaigns. A lot of these automation platforms allow you, they keep track of when people open them and then they will send emails to that individual at the specific time that individual is most likely to, to open it. It's amazing the AI on these systems. So you can't help but improve your open and conversion rates by using them. Well, AI, what does that stand for Margie? Artificial intelligence. In this case, it's probably machine learning, which is closely related, but that's probably a whole nother webinar topic. Yeah, I feel like that's one we should add to the list for 2022. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, another campaign that actually I would say is a basic but can be extremely impactful on and maximizing conversions is referred to as the shopping cart abandonment campaign. So um, we've all done some sort of online shopping and there's a number of reasons why people decide not to hit the checkout button. We're not going to talk about that, but rather how can you maximize using marketing automation to increase the conversions to get more people to actually hit the checkout button. Mm -hmm. So um, using, uh, you know, whatever, there's a million different tools that are out there. You, you can integrate it with um, a, an automation tool or some e-commerce platforms. I know Shopify has this automatically built in uh, some of that marketing automation so that if um, someone didn't actually hit the checkout button, but you can do things such as, you know, offer just a reminder, like an hour after the fact, hey, don't forget you still have items in your cart or some sort of incentive. So, you know, check out within the next 20 minutes and get this 10% 10 10 off your whole cart volume, whatever, you know, there's a lot of different ways to do that. But even just that nudge reminds people that um, you are looking at this and you probably got distracted. So here's your reminder to hit the checkout button. Um, but there's a ton of data that says, as this um, screenshot illustrates, uh, there's you can significantly increase the conversions um, 
if you're pushing some sort of messaging and you can just build this out to be automatic, which is beautiful. Absolutely. Um, another kind of campaign, we're just trying to give you some examples here of the, you know, actually the low hanging fruit when it comes to marketing automation. Another one of those is a welcome campaign. You spent a lot of time and effort to get that prospect to become a customer. Let's make sure they have a good experience and automations around welcoming um, and onboarding can really improve that experience. Um, if it's an e-commerce, you certainly have seen this when you've bought something where you get the thank you email, then you get the email that says, hey, you know, we acknowledge that you've purchased this and we'll send you the shipping announcement when it goes and then you get the shipping announcement and then after you get it, you get the, the email that says, hey, it was shipped to you, did you get it, and then you get the thank you. Those are examples of an e-commerce campaign that's keeping you in the loop and keeping you comfortable with what's happening. Let's say you have, um, a, you could be a school or you could be a service such as a physical therapist or a doctor and you have a new patient and this is the first time you're seeing them. You can have an automatic campaign that makes sure to send out those forms that they need to deliver. Thanks them for it, reminds them of their upcoming appointment. Um, once they go to the appointment afterwards, says, here's your follow-up. And then after that says, it's been six weeks since your last you know, visit, you were scheduled for a follow-up, here it is. All of that can be automated to have that really smooth experience for that person you've spent so much time and effort to keep, and it helps you retain them and um, hopefully in the end, turns them into an advocate for your business. And then I'll add, like we did with the newsletters, you can build in the rule so that if someone doesn't open the email, resend the email to just really reinforce um, that reminder to them. Absolutely. Um, the other thing that I'm going to throw out here, and I know Margie, we didn't really talk about this, but because uh, labor um, shortages are so big right now, you're trying to have, you know, really have a positive onboarding experience for any new team members or employees that you have, mm -hmm. you can incorporate this same approach and, and have some um, marketing automation set out to really welcome that new team member and educate them on your internal processes, your the language that you use and how to do things. So there's, it's not just um, external that you can use a lot of these tools, but you can make it part of your internal culture as well. For sure. All right, next guy. So um, I got a fun offer. I'm gonna throw this out here, but while I'm talking about this, I want you to think about any questions that you have and feel free to throw them in the chat or the Q and A. But I'm super excited to share this for, for flat $99. Um, you get uh, 30 minutes of me, <laughs> a strategy <laughs> session. A very valuable thing. Really, really pick my brain and we can go really deep on um, your marketing automation strategy or really any, any conversation around digital marketing. Um, so there's a calendar link and I'm just gonna throw that in the chat to make all of your lives easier right now. Um, the calendar link to just get on my calendar. So just pick a date and time that works for you. Um, and I have a question in there when you sign up uh, to just define how you'd really like to best utilize our time together. And then I'm definitely going to do the best I can to give you way more than $99 worth of value in our 30 minutes together. That being said, um, this is what we covered today. What is marketing automation? We talked very high level on some of the basics on how you can use it to, to create efficiencies in, in your life. Um, and then um, we talked about how to really prioritize um, your leads, but gave you some low hanging fruit as Margie called it related mm -hmm. to building campaigns that convert. So um, we're going to, if you're interested in talking to uh, Margie, myself, or any member of the team, feel free to reach out, um, call the office, visit our website, fill out our contact form. We've got lots of brain power in the office, happy to help mm -hmm. you, or sign up for that 30-minute uh, strategy session with me. We've got two more webinars coming up in this series on marketing automation, the CRM and list segmentation. So we touched on that briefly. We're going to go really deep on on really the ins and outs of CRMs and, and segmenting your list and kind of some best practices for having really clean, solid uh, lists that help you maximize your opportunities. And then uh, mastering campaigns. So again, we just gave you a little taste of some campaigns to help conversion. We're gonna go really deep into that. You can sign up for either of these at keystoneclick.com forward slash webinars. And that is all that we've got right now. So we will open it up for 
questions, feel free to throw them in the chat. I can uh, 